today's the day. Perhaps you should take your time with this review, because as soon as it's done, that's when the monster will be here. <laughs> Uh, hey everybody! Uh, welcome back to the uh, the, the road to destruct. No, no road to devastation. Uh, I'm your host, Rob Thirteen, and for Dimas says there's a monster at the end of this review, and that's ridiculous. But the show must go on. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, we are finally gonna combine everybody together and look at Devastator. Uh, as you can see, I have all the components laid out right now, so we just need to start getting them combined together. Um, so, let's get into that. For my own sanity, or what's left of it, we're going to be doing this in chunks. So we're going to start here uh, combining uh, Scavenger and Mixmaster together to form sort of the head and upper torso. In theory, this should be relatively straightforward, at least if the instructions are to be believed. We're setting this aside for right now. And let's see. There are supposed to be something that look like clips. Yeah, uh, right here there are clips and they go into these parts right here. So. And here we are. So we're clipped in right here. Also, I don't know how well you can see it here, but the uh, wheels sort of peg in onto this little bar thing right in the middle there. Uh, not that the instructions in indicate anything like that. Sorry for the cutaway, but it was taking a lot of effort and frustration to get it to this point and trying to trim out some of the time. So, we're already starting to get something like this. So, very, very cool. Let's move on. Next up, we're going to be combining Scrapper uh, with the torso to make the arm. So, he's got a sort of a Combiner Wars style peg here. And it's going to slot in right here. And it just goes in like this. So I wonder if we can slot it in more like this to give him a proper... Oh, I see now. Okay. So let's go the way we were supposed to. So this part rotates. I didn't realize that. So there's his elbow. And we get some forward movement there. A little preview of his articulation. Okay. On to the next part, we're going to start getting the other arm together. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two together to form the arm and then we're going to put it on his shoulder. I'm going to do this off camera real quick, but what we're going to do is peg this into this. Alright, so here is the arm all together. You kind of have a pseudo wrist joint that lets you hinge right there. And again, we got the same sort of Combiner Wars style plug that's going to go in here. Well, I say Combiner Wars style. It's not really a Combiner Wars plug. Anyway, so let's get this guy turned around. And what is the recommended orientation on this guy? Looking at the instructions. Okay. There we go. And then we can get him like this. And oh goodness, he is really starting to look like something. Like some sort of big creature. <laughs> All right, on to the next part. We're going to start getting the waist and legs together. All right, so now we have long haul overload and rampage here and we're ready to start getting the legs together 
So the way this works, we got little tracks here and here and basically rails for them here and here. So now we just need to get things slid together and then we'll have the uh, legs all put together. I'm gonna do that off camera and we'll be right back. And here it is. <laughs> We're getting very, very big here. And as you can see, we got this part that just flips up over here. It doesn't connect to anything. It just stays up there. But that gets us our legs and torso and we are getting super, super tall. So let's make this guy even bigger. All right, so we got a track right here and a corresponding part right here. So we just need to get those together and then we will have this guy almost completely done. After that, it's a matter of getting this part into position and adding on the little extras. Let's get that done off camera real quick. And when we're back, we're gonna have our Devastator. And here he is. So as you can see, he's a big boy. Um, let's go ahead and do some comparisons real quick and then we'll get into everything else. Um, hopefully this will work because I'm having to push him all the way back into my set in order to even get him remotely in frame. So to start off, here he is next to a Combiner Wars style combiner. This is a uh, Leo Kaiser. And yeah, a little bit on the small side in comparison. Next, something that's a little bit more comparable. Here he is next to Titan class Predaking. So yeah, Predaking is taller. That's partly because Devastator here has a little bit more hunched over proportions. But that should also give you an idea how he scales next to other Titan figures because Predaking isn't the tallest of uh, the combiner, I'm sorry, the uh, Titan class figures by a long shot. Going a little bit smaller, here he is next to my usual standby, Deluxe Class Siege Ironhide. So yeah, he like comes up to his knees, quote unquote. And here is Voyager class Siege Megatron, a little bit taller. Here he is next to uh, Titan uh, Titan's Return Leader class Soundwave. So he comes up to kind of the chest. And probably one of the more important comparisons I can make. Here he is next to the Legion class mudflap. Though that's not where he should go. There we go. <laughs> Those of you who have seen the movie will understand this. Okay, let's release poor Mudflap. He's had enough happen to him. All right, let's go handheld and take a look around this guy. I think that'll be the best way to do this. So... As you can see, we got lots of nice detail on this guy. You have a visible head there, that's unfortunate. And everything comes together fairly solid, it feels to me. Though I do have concerns about 
all this weight going on these two guys, Long Haul and uh, Rampage. Because um, this is a very heavy figure. While Predaking towers over him, Devastator feels a lot heavier. And I think that's because he's just made up of more plastic. Take a look at him from behind now. You can see that they try to hide a lot of stuff on his back, which is understandable and a fairly standard uh, trick for a Transformer design. I think the uh, part that's worst off for it is you have this sort of gaping hole back here. But considering I imagine they wanted to avoid issues with having too many extra kibble pieces that have to be stored someplace. They did a pretty good job. Now he does have some semblance of articulation. He's got the ratcheting joints in here for sort of a elbow and these parts here can even move to give a semblance of shoulder joints. I just have to be careful because he feels very back heavy and moving around too much shifts things around. He also does have articulation up here and down here, I should say, at his hips. No knees, really, though it feels like these could maybe move a little bit. And you could give him the splits if you really wanted to, but why would you do that? Head obviously doesn't articulate. And you can, if I can get them in a frame, you can have his claws move around. So yeah, he's not gonna be winning any articulation prizes. Move the camera a bit. But in the presence department, he really does quite nicely. Now there are some uh, third party add-on kits that add a few more details and fill things out a little bit. Um, I may get those and if I do, we might uh, continue this uh, road to devastation a little bit. Uh, but for right now, I kind of like him where he's at. Uh, the only thing that bugs me a little bit um, is we have these parts which don't really have anywhere to go. Um, oops, bump the camera there. I mean, I can probably put this like right here if I wanted to. And I think I might be able to find a place for this, like just slotting it somewhere on his back or something like that. But considering they made these parts, I feel like they should have made a place for them in the combined form, just so that way everything stays together. Uh, but... I don't remember seeing anything on the instructions, though I'm sure somebody will correct me if I am incorrect on that. But yeah, um, I think that is a review. Altogether, they make a pretty cool figure. Um, you're not going to be putting him in super duper action poses or anything like that. But if your goal is to have a big monster sitting on your shelf looking like a monster, I think this guy pulls it off quite nicely. And it has certainly been an experience slowly getting this guy together um, over the course of, well, this month, as well as just over the course of the year plus of collecting the individual figures. Um, I think that aspect of it alone was actually kind of an interesting experience. So it would have been nice to get everything all in one go. Stretching it out a little bit has been, it has been kind of a fun experience, at least to me. I know some people did not care for that whatsoever. And it has been announced that Hasbro is putting out a, um, an actual box set for this that does have um, some uh, extra paint apps and stuff including some of the figures having um basically dirt washes on them and 
Am I upset about that? Truth be told, not really. From the pictures that I saw, um, I don't think the differences are great enough to uh, justify me wanting to buy it all over again, particularly since I know it's going to be an expensive set. But um, if you haven't picked up these figures yet and you want to get this Devastator, that's the way to go. These A lot of these uh, figures that make him up go for stupid prices online right now. So don't spend way over market retail trying to uh, get this guy, at least right now. Maybe if you're watching this in the distant future and the only way to get these parts is to pay way over market retail, then yeah, of course. But as it stands right now, I don't think he's worth spending too much extra money over suggested retail. But anyway, that's been a review. Thank you very much for watching all of this. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. Check the description below for links to my storefront where you can get official shelf space, t-shirts, and more. And yeah, thank you again, and I'll see you the next time you step on this road to devastation. No sign of that monster that Redimus was talking about. <laughs> wait, 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 I get it, I get it. Devastator, that was the monster at the end of the month. Of course, he was just messing with me. <laughs> that... That was weird. What's that sound? Pull him out of there in a day or two. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs>